I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the Ford Everest Sport. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out by looking at it that the Everest might in fact be related to a Ranger because that's exactly what it is. It's a Ranger with a wagon body and much of the front is kind of the same. But like the Ranger, it is completely developed in Melbourne in Australia. So styled by the design team in Broadmeadows, tuned in Yu Yangs and the Simpson Desert. And I suppose all of that means that it actually has an affinity for the way our roads are. In terms of the look of it though, it's definitely designed for Asia and it's made in Thailand and so that's who it's trying to please. The Sport on the other hand is trying to appease performance loving Australians and you can see that from the moment you look at the front of the car. That lettering across the bonnet has a little bit of Range Rover about it and the Sport that we have here brings all of this mesh grille and all this blackout section including those black 20 inch wheels, black mirror caps and more black is not enough black for this car to the point where it's actually become the best-selling variant in the Everest range. As we go around the side here, it's same old Everest, but without all the chintzy plastic chrome. And this one here says by turbo, which means it's the higher engine of the two specs. We have a 3.2 litre five cylinder entry level engine, or this two litre twin turbo diesel tied to a 10 speed automatic. But more about that in a minute. As we come around here, we've got these side steps the black version of these multi-spoke 20 inch alloys and at the back here we continue on with that sort of Range Rover-esque lettering although it's just in the garnish across the boot here where it says Everest and a little sport decal. Now inside here it's probably no territory as we're about to find out in a minute but for a seven seater and behind the back seat here we've got 249 litres of space and this little thing here for I don't know wet boardies uh, a 12 volt outlet here and when we flip these seats down while there's no luggage cover on this car although there is the mounts for it there's 800 plus litres of space between the floor and the roof. While it might be kind of easy to disguise the Ranger DNA outside on the Everest inside there isn't a chance this is absolutely identical to what a Ranger has. In fact it's actually kind of close to a Ranger Raptor and having this navy blue stitching across the dash and general dark finish appliques like these things which are kind of navy blue although they look black all of which reduce the chintzy chrome that's in the normal Everest. Unfortunately the relation to the Ranger and all of that is that it is inheriting decade old switch gear. So you have all of this HVAC section here which is difficult to see and difficult to operate when you're moving although I know you can hit climate on sync and do it up here but then you're usually playing music there or having navigation there. In this MY20 model it has a USB up here for a dash cam to match the one USB buried right down here and the other one here. The theme of it is is that it is not a holistic design but what matters most when you're driving the car is that the driving position is excellent. You're sitting directly behind the wheel, you're sitting nice and low, unlike some of its competitors. And even though the instrument pack is emblematic of all the things that I just mentioned, where you have a speedo here, but then you have to scroll through all these other things. You can't have a taco and a digital speedo at the same time. And yet the screen on the left only shows three different things. All that stuff is neither here nor there. We have proper door grabs in the doors. We have a space for a decent sized bottle in the door down here as well as dual cup holders here, a really deep cabin in the centre here, although the armrest doesn't slide forward. Even the driver gets a Jesus handle, so that's important when you're about to roll. Uh, and the stereo is really good. It's like a 10 speaker thing with a subwoofer, which does a great job of draining out the road noise. But the one benefit of buying a seven seater like the Everest, in fact, the main reason for buying one of these is that it actually has off-road capability. And this dial here proves it. We've got normal driving here. We flick this one here and it shows up here, snow mud, grass mode, sand mode, and finally rock mode. And we can lock it in four by four low and lock the rear diff. And the rear suspension in this thing is coil sprung and the same as a Raptor's. Plus it has a transfer case, which the Ranger doesn't have. So in actual fact, the Everest's kind of coolness in terms of its off-road ability is genuine. Now, much like the front sitting position in the Everest, the middle row is actually really well configured. 
compared to a lot of other separate chassis four-wheel drives that it competes against, the floor doesn't feel really high. So you're actually sitting in the seat with a reasonable amount of under thigh support. I've got heaps of leg room behind my own driving position. I'm looking up and over the front seats and the seat itself has really good support. This backrest moves into five positions. We've got an armrest in the middle here with cup holders in the middle. In the center here, we have individual fan and temperature controls for these little vents in the roof, which are then duplicated in the row behind me. We also have a ventilation to the feet as well as the face. We have a 230 volt three prong outlet and a 12 volt outlet and proper door grabs and more Jesus handles. So in terms of putting the family in this and going to Fraser Island, it's actually pretty good. The center seat, the base of it's fine, but the backrest is pretty uncomfortable. You can still fit a full bottle holder in the door. We have two map pockets in front of us and surprising comfort. Should we get in the back? I will try. Now, to get the back seat, headrest down, you pick up this lever here and slide it forward. And if you're limber, and just so you can see, that's not so bad. It's not good, but it's no worse than the territories. We've got more air vents up here. We've got a little armrest for it. I, I would not want to be an add-on here for any longer than maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes if you're drunk. Um, but it's acceptable for kids. It's pretty good. And you've got a really good view. I can see even higher over the front seats than I could here. And I've got air vents. So that's good. So what is essentially a wagon body on a Ranger chassis? The Everest has a surprising amount of tech in it, starting with the bi-LED headlights for MY20 that I forgot to mention when I was at the front of the car and continuing with a bi-turbo diesel. Now, I don't know why they don't call it twin turbo diesel, but apparently everyone loves you when you buy, so bi-turbo diesel it is. It's a two litre, 157 kilowatt, 500 Newton meter engine, although the Everest is also available with a 3.2 litre five cylinder that's been in the Ranger for 10 years. Now that engine is nowhere near as quick as this car is off the line because we also have Ford's joint venture 10 speed automatic in this car as per the Mustang and as per some GM cars in the US. And honestly, does anyone need 10 speeds in a turbo diesel? Apparently they do, but the 3.2 litre five cylinder is better in hardcore towing and in really hilly environments than this car. The bi-turbo two litre is more about giving the Everest a little bit of tech and refinement, and that it does. Now the 10 speed is actually pretty good in general driving. It gives almost imperceptible changes, although when you are up it, it's constantly shifting. So if you want to hear a diesel shifting gears constantly, this is your car. It also has a sport mode that does actually make the engine feel stronger because you don't need to give it so much accelerator to get it to be on boost, yet it also adds some extra weight to the steering. And I think that that is something that the Everest kind of needs all the time. Normally the steering's quite light, and yet combined with the chassis tune in this car, which is all done in Melbourne by Ford Australia, its turning is quite precise. So you've got this light steering with this quite pointy turn in, and then you've got the limitations of it being on a separate chassis design, which means that it needs to be reasonably firm to control a body that's so tall like this, and so it can patter around on bumps and stuff, despite the fact that it has a coil sprung rear end and not the leaf springs of the Ranger. It's way better than a Ranger, but it's nowhere near as good as a Raptor. That said, every other separate chassis wagon ute hybrid thingy are crap to drive they're all crap especially the toyota fortuner and so in that respect the everest is actually really good you can even have a bit of fun in this car it turns in well it hangs on well yeah it's tires will squeal but it's actually really nicely balanced and it has some pretty good drive out of corners and so while the fundamentals of the mechanics of this car engine aside aren't exactly cutting edge there's an element of driving fun and quality to the Everest driving experience that makes it quite satisfying to be in. Where it does have a lot of tech is in terms of safety. We have adaptive cruise control, we have auto high beam, we have lane keep assist, we have nighttime pedestrian protection, rear parking sensors, a rear camera, and if there's anything I've forgotten then you probably didn't need it. Traffic sign recognition, it has that. And so that's all state-of-the-art stuff 
for a normal passenger car, let alone something like this that can tow and that can go off road and that can seat seven people and that can look rugged and can actually be kind of cool, which is what all the boys like about a Ranger in the first place. The Everest was never really gonna be a true replacement for the seven seat territory. And that's because it's not based on a car, but that is also the best thing about it. It has proper off-road DNA from its 3.1 towing capacity to its ground clearance, to the fact that there might even be potentially the possibility of an Everest Raptor in the future, if anyone was interested in that. And if only you could squeeze the Falcons V8 engine into it. But that's beside the point. This is a good car. It's better than the rest of its competitors. And I actually quite like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment on chasing cars or on the Ford Everest Sport. Thanks for watching.